This video is only one part of an in-depth review, so check out the rest at thegoodride.com. Thanks for watching. This, my friends, is the hometown hero. We've reviewed this in the past a couple times, and this year I just said, you know, what the hell, I'm gonna buy this. Bought it in a 56, the size that I felt was right for me, and put some time in this. Rode it mainly with the Burton Kendos and the Union Atlas, but got on other boots and bindings with this as well, and compared it to a lot of different boards. Got this in all kinds of conditions, everything from some decently hard snow to a little bit of powder actually a good powder day with Clint, our split board reviewer. To give you a short summary, this is kind of like a Burton flight attendant that's a little softer, that you size down a little bit. So it's got kind of more of an all mountain size in a tapered directional shape. And it's a very fun free ride to alternative free ride kind of ride that has a little bit more setback, a little bit more directional float than the flight attendant, and just has a softer flex, and a little bit more of a stiff all-mountain personality combined with that tapered directional feel. It carves really well, it pops really well on an ollie, and it's a good one board directional quiver for those that see everything except for hard to icy snow. That's not a place where this shines. And when it comes to sizing, I've ridden the 52 and I've ridden the 60. 52 felt too small, 60 felt too big, 56 felt just right. I don't think they could make this in a better size for my specs. Even my weight, I'm on the heavier side for this board, it still felt like it could handle my weight no problem, and my size nine boots could turn this, no problem. When it comes to the shape, you have a tapered directional shape, and you really feel that in powder, but on groomers, you don't feel that narrower tail as much as you would think, because they do some weird stuff with the side cut to give it this feel that isn't as washy and tapered as a lot of boards are, and it's really cool. So it feels more between the feet than you would think on groomers, and then has a different personality in powder, that's good. But the directional camber profile, camber from the tail, going past the front binding into some early rise in the nose, has a very consistent feel in all conditions, except for in really, like, when you go from soft snow to a hard snow patch, it changes its personality and lets go. The edge lets go a little easy, but overall it's really easy, like one footing off the chair, it's really easy to flat base, going down like let's say a long flat run where you just wanna put the base flat and keep going. This does a great job there, it tracks really well. It's just more for advanced expert riders because it's not an easy board to skid your turns. If you want a board like that, then you want the 3D daily driver. That's a little more forgiving with the lifted sides. It just doesn't feel as locked in as the Hometown Hero, and it's very similar. The skeleton key is more like the Hometown Hero. It's in here. I wish I had the flight attendant. That would be a much better comparison between these three boards. I think they match up the best and have the most overlap, where the skeleton key is a little more directional and it has a different, a little bit different personality. Now, when it comes to flex, you know, you can see it's kind of medium stiff, uh, medium, medium stiff. The nose is pretty stiff, but overall after what, like six to 10 days on this, you can see it's still got a lot of the flex. The tail is really stiff, but there's a decent give in the middle which is a little different than some of the family tree boards. It's much easier to access than let's say the flight attendant or the deep thinker. You have to be a more accomplished rider to get this thing to spring on an ollie. Where guys like me who are more on the average side or maybe even less than average depending on who you talk to, this board shines a little more for people like me. It's just easier to pop and to ollie. And speaking of butters, I can butter this okay. It takes a little work in the tail, 
but in the nose, it butters pretty well. And as it starts to break in, it butters easier and easier. The give in the center is a little more than other boards, and it's kind of on par with a 3D daily driver, maybe a touch stiffer. Now, when it comes to speed, I think you want the flight attendant if you really like to point it a lot on the mountain or the deep thinker, but it's a little faster than the skeleton key, I thought, by just a touch, even though it's a little shorter, and it's a little bit faster than the 3D daily driver as well. I like the base glide. Once I got the base dialed out, sometimes it was a little chalky in the beginning, but I got a like a very mellow base grind, and that fixed it, gave it a couple wax jobs, and now it's that just super fast Burton board. But there were some moments where it felt a little chalky and slow, and it was uh, pissing me off. But I'm glad I got it fixed, and it's good to know that Burton's bases are still pretty much the way they used to be up near the fastest of fast. You just might have to do a little work to make it happen. Now, when it comes to uneven terrain, this is a great all day ride. It's just not that fatiguing. It's really fun and it might not power over Chunder as well as like the flat attendant or deep thinker. But when you get into like micro bumpy hard snow, it doesn't get cranky like the Deep Thinker and like a lot of other boards like the Deep Thinker. The flight attendant doesn't either, but this is just a little more mellow ride to kind of slow down and turn through messy snow that you see the second half of the day. I'd rather be on this than the flight attendant and definitely on this over the Deep Thinker. So very good all day ride, even a Saturday resort day this can handle. When it comes to edge hold, I feel like the Burton Hometown Hero, along with all Burton directional camber boards, just aren't on par with the rest of the industry. And I'm not talking about disrupted side cut boards that this is competing against. I'm talking more about just boards with similar side cuts. They seem to hold an edge a little bit better when you get into medium to medium hard snow. This just seems to let go a little earlier. I've tried tuning this and I've had friends who are just expert tuners set this up and they've sharpened the edges. The edge hold was better but it felt much more locked in and still didn't feel like you were getting enough grip for having it feel that locked in and catchy. So I see why they detuned it a little bit, but yeah, it's just not a good board for hard to icy snow. I just think it's just a really shines in good conditions and leave it at that. When it comes to turn initiation, this is pretty quick. It's medium to medium quick and it's easy in the trees to just get this to turn back and forth if you're riding through trees on a powder day. I think the skeleton key is a little easier, and uh, but I think it's on par with the flight attendant and the 3D daily driver. One thing I would say though is the turning experience with this is like magical, like the skeleton key, like the flight attendant. It just has this springy fun turn that works with a wide variety of turning radiuses. You can make circle carves, you can widen it out, you can make across the groomer carves, you can make down the line kind of high speed S turns, although the flight attendant and deep thinker are better for that, but this is still very competent there. And then when you just really wanna just carve hard, you get such a good spring out of the turn. It's just when you engage into the turn, as you're starting to come out, it feels like it's just setting you up for your next turn. It's like a cheater. It's just making you better. I don't know what they're doing with this side cut, but and this camber profile and how they're working it all together, but Burton just makes magic when it comes to good conditions carving. When it comes to powder, I like this setback directional ride. The setback on board is more than the flight attendant and uh, getting close to the skeleton key. And it's definitely more than the 3D daily driver. So it has very good directional float for a board that is such a fun groomer board. And it's a good one board quiver. I, I really like it. Uh, one thing I found though was I did like 
the way that 3D camber profile turns in powder compared to this, I felt like I had more float with this, but I thought the turning experience in powder was better with a 3D daily driver, which was interesting. So I was kind of torn between the two of them in powder, but if I had to choose one thing, I would choose better directional float because I can see some pretty deep days where I live at, you know, riding Mount Bachelor and I want to be ready for them with a board that has easier directional float. And I've had this in powder in the past in other sizes and it did really well. And I got a little powder with this this year. And I don't know if I have that on film though, but it was the same day I was riding the 3D daily driver. I just got tired of the camera and just wanted to enjoy a powder day. Sometimes I just have to have some me time. When it comes to switch riding, this is very competent switch. Uh, it does way better than you would think for like 10, 12 millimeters of taper. I really didn't expect that, but it lights up really well switch for what it is. Hit and kickers with this is fine. It's it's a little setback, it's a little directional, but if you wanna just go get air around the mountain, this does a great job. Now overall, this hometown hero, I'm glad I bought it. I'm glad I put it through its paces this year and it did really well when I compared it against other favorites and it held its own and shined in some places, was weaker in others like edge hold, but it's a very recommendable board for somebody who wants that kind of all mountain size in a tapered directional kind of free ride shape. All our reviews are a best effort, objective opinion from an average rider's perspective. There's no brand oversight and we're free to say whatever we want. We send back everything unless it's a favorite, then we ask to keep those or straight up buy them. Now, if you need advice, fill out the Me Harmony profile in the contact us section of the site. It's the only way I can help you properly. If you want to support us and if what we reviewed appeals to you, it helps if you buy through our links. So thanks for watching.